This film forms part of a program of three films which show all the work and adjustments to be performed on the 307cc roof and boot. This film is film number one. Whenever reference is made to work or adjustments described in one of the other two films, a flashing icon will appear on the screen. In this film, we will first of all describe the new features and the system architecture. We will then see some preliminary work. Then, how to change an actuator and the hydraulic unit. We will also see how to change a switch. Finally, we'll see some general principles relating to the adjustment of gaps and the flush fitting of the roof and the boot. Given the number of moving parts, it is important when operating the roof and boot to pay attention to the position of your hands in order to avoid any risk of injury. It is also essential, before removal, to accurately identify the routing of the piping, harnesses and cables The major new feature of the 307cc folding roof is the system of automatic locking of the roof panel onto the windscreen cross piece. This operation is performed by an actuator located underneath the roof. By means of a cable system, this actuator also controls two side locks which interlock on either side of the roof and the rear quarter panels. At the rear, the decker cover is formed of two sections. It is deployed by means of a mechanism controlled by the pivoting arms. In the coupe position, only the front section is deployed. In the cabriolet position, the two sections are interlocked by means of a lock controlled by a cable linked to the decker cover mechanism. The boot lid is fitted on two seven-axis pantographs which enable the boot to be opened in the luggage loading position. These two pantographs are fitted onto a tube connected to the vehicle body by two four-axis pantographs which allow the mechanism to clear the bumper when the boot is opened as part of the roof operation. The boot sill trim forms part of the mechanism and is tilted at the same time as the tube. Two side locks lock the boot tube to the vehicle body. On either side Hinged rear quarter covers, controlled by cables and an electric motor, close off the area liberated by rear quarters in the cabriolet position. And finally, note that when the roof passes into the cabriolet position, the rear screen separates from the rear quarter upright panels, thus optimizing the boot capacity.
The ECU that controls the hydraulic unit is located in the rear section under the boot carpet. This hydraulic unit operates five actuators. The roof lock locking actuator, the two roof articulation actuators, and the two boot articulation actuators. Twelve specific switches control each phase of the operation. Many operations can be carried out by stopping the roof cycle in the intermediate position. For other operations, it is necessary to place the roof and boot assembly in the so-called coach position. Open the boot and lock the lock. Activate the roof opening cycle. It is essential for a second person to be present to guide the boot lid. In this position, many operations can be carried out on the whole system. When the work is complete, unlock the boot lock before closing the boot. In order to remove the rear side trim, unclip and remove the seat base. Remove the head restraint trim. Remove the seat belt guide trim. Remove the seat back. Unclip the upper trim. Unclip the grab handle trim. Remove the handle fasteners. Disconnect the electric window switch. Unclip and remove the door trim. This operation enables removal of the tie rods, and placement of the pivoting arms of the positioning rods. When refitting, adjust the seat belt guide trim so as to avoid any interference with the decker cover. In order to remove the boot trim, place the vehicle in the coach position. Remove the boot carpet. Remove the upper sill trim. You now have access to the hinged rear quarter covers. Remove the lower sill trim. You now have access to the ECU and the hydraulic unit. On either side, remove the rubber stops for the rear screen and the trim on the supports. On the driver's side, the trim includes the luggage cover sensor and the boot light. Remove the side protective trim by pulling it backwards. Remove the rear trim. On the driver's side, disconnect the 12 volt socket and the parking aid ECU. Remove the side trim. This enables you to change the boot locked switches and on the driver's side, the boot open switch. Replace the rubber stops for the rear screen. Be careful, the hydraulic circuit pressure can reach 150 bar when operational. For any operation on the hydraulic circuit, 
the operator must wear vinyl gloves and safety goggles. Before removing any items, carefully identify the exact routing of the piping, Note the roof open switch located close to the roof actuator on the driver's side. The piping is secured to the actuators by means of brackets. An O-ring that is changed systematically ensures that the system is watertight. In order to remove the actuator for the roof locking mechanism, use a spanner to open the hydraulic circuit and loosen the hydraulic unit filler screw. Remove the locking mechanism. Place protective covers on the vehicle. Remove the retaining brackets. Cover the ends with absorbent paper. If required, extract the O-rings from the actuator. When refitting, place new O-joints on the pipe shoulders. Systematically change the brackets and the rod fastening clips. When refitting is complete, check the level of oil in the hydraulic unit reservoir. If necessary, top up with the recommended mineral oil. Check the operation of the roof cycle. Perform the operation several times in order to bleed any air pockets in the circuit. Note that the hydraulic unit possesses a thermal safety system which inhibits operation in the event of excessive temperatures. In order to remove the hydraulic unit, Remove the sill trim and the boot carpet. Relieve the pressure of the hydraulic Note that the pipe numbers on the actuator side are also found on the hydraulic unit side and on the connection plate. The ECU receives data from the 12 system dedicated switches. The ECU does not require any initialization even if it is changed. The diagnostic tool can be used for functional testing of each switch.
When work is carried out on these programs, any possible change of switch will be indicated. For example, to change the roof closed switch, disconnect and remove the lock catch on the driver's side. Remove the retention plate. The plate is changed systematically. Any adjustments must be carried out with the vehicle seals in place and with the vehicle standing on all four wheels on a flat surface. Following any removal fitting operation, it is essential to adjust form and fit. This is also applicable in the event of problems of water ingress or wind noise. If both the boot and the roof have been removed, the form and fit adjustment operations must always start with the roof. Before removal operations, the original adjustments must always be identified. Adjustment of the boot lid is carried out with the balance rods removed. All the form and fit values are given in the repair methods. The gaps can be measured with a ruler. Two 6mm shims enable the recommended distances to be obtained when the roof is refitted. Adjustments are carried out in the three axes. The x-axis or longitudinal axis, the y-axis or transversal axis, and the z-axis or vertical axis. Following each operation, check the operation of the roof and the boot. Carry out a fault reading, followed by clearance of the faults. Carry out a water ingress test and a road test.